Today we have the treat of Jerome Powell speaking at the Economic Club of Washington in D.C. This speech happened on February 7th, 2023. So this does say 2022 at the top, but this is 2023. This speech happened uh, yesterday. Or no, today. Today's Tuesday, so this happened today. Correct? Today's Tuesday, right? Yes. Okay. Hey, Amen. It is what it is. Let's go. Let's get right into it. This is a an hour long speech, so I'm gonna chop this up. We'll keep it to the uh, the good parts, and let's get started. Everybody knows our special guest is the chairman of the Federal Reserve Board, who has now completed five years as chairman, uh, as of two days ago, your fifth year, and now been on the Fed board for almost twelve years. So, Jay, um, thank you very much for being here. And why don't we start with an easy question? <laughs> so you made a speech last week commenting on the FOMC's decision to raise the Fed discount rate by um, a, a small amount, relatively speaking, 25 basis Jerome's points. Jerome's a serious I mean, man, let me tell you. Um, but at the time, it wasn't clear that the jobs report would be as strong as it turned out to be subsequently. Had you known that the jobs report was going to be as strong... <laughs> Would you have done 25 basis points or something different? David, thank you for that question, and thank you, <laughs> thank you for inviting me here today. It's great to be here. Uh, so we don't get to play it that way, unfortunately. We have to, uh, but I'll, so I'll, I'll take it this way. <clears throat> uh, so the message we were sending at the FOMC meeting last Wednesday was really that um, the disinflationary process, the process of getting inflation down, has begun, and it's begun in the goods sector, which is uh, about a quarter of our economy. But it has a long way to go. These are the very early stages of disinflation. So the services sector really, except for housing services, <coughs> pardon me, uh, is not really showing any, any disinflation yet. So our message really was this process is likely to take quite a bit of time. Uh, it's not going to be, uh, we don't think, smooth. It's probably going to be bumpy. And so we think that we're going to need to do further rate increases, as we said, and we, we think that we'll need to hold policy at a restrictive level for a period of time. Then comes the... Uh, the, the uh, so, what have I been saying? The Fed will go higher with their interest rates, and they'll keep the interest rates higher for longer. I've been saying this. The market keeps saying that's not going to happen. They keep saying the Fed's bullshitting. I don't think the Fed's bullshitting. Labor market report for January. And it's very strong. It's certainly stronger than anyone I know expected. <clears throat> and so, but, but I would say, we didn't expect it to be this strong, but I would say it, it kind of shows you why we think that this will be a, a, a process that takes a significant period of time. In hindsight, would you say that when COVID <clears throat> hit the economy and we injected $5 trillion of fiscal policy uh, into the economy uh, and the Fed did uh, quantitative easing and other related things, kept interest rates very low, would you say in hindsight that was a mistake or was the right policy at the time? So I think you have to go back to the decisions that were made in real time. And it was something nobody had ever seen. The global economy came to a virtual standstill. People were talking about depression. People were talking, and we, we didn't think, we, we had no idea when we would get um, uh, vaccines that worked. So Congress took very strong measures, and we took very strong measures. And you see where the economy is. You've got a very, very strong labor market, but you have high inflation. I th as I mentioned, we're at the beginning of getting that down. If you look around the world, though, at other countries, they're also experiencing high inflation, including countries that didn't, that didn't do the, as much as we did, either from a fiscal or monetary standpoint. So that, that tells you, though, that... A Dude, it doesn't matter when everybody, pretty much, is doing the same thing. Crazy fiscal spending, crazy monetary policy. It really doesn't matter if your country decides not to do that. The like 90% of the globe is doing it, so the, the global inflation is going to go up. I mean, we had massive globalism. All these economies are connected, and everybody's going to get inflation. I mean, most countries could not, you know, do that much fiscal spending and that much easing. It wouldn't matter if the United States was doing it. It would hurt pretty much everybody anyway. Okay. And 2% and is the rate we had for the last 25 years before inflation came along. But prior to that, for most of U.S. history, we were higher than 2%. Is it that 2% is we're now a, a so used to 2% after 25 years of it that you think that's the appropriate level? 
So for, we went through this long period where inflation was, was really anchored around 2%. And we, we think that, and, and you know, economists think that that's because people start to expect 2% inflation. And inflation, it's in, in a way, if people, if everyone expects that prices are going to go up, prices and wages are going to go up 2% per year, then plus productivity in the case of wages, then it will. That's what will happen. Having, that, the, having price stability, real price stability for an extended period of time is just enormously beneficial to the public because... You can then, on the back of that, you can build a very strong labor market, as we had. We had a labor market with really... So like I said in my other video, the Fed, these meetings are created to control the narrative, right? The Fed says the inflation will be 2%, then it will be 2%, not because of what they do, because of what they tell you it's going to be. So this, he, he says this all the time. A big part of their job is convincing people what reality should be and having them accept it and live it. It's crazy. It's absolutely insane if you really think about it. So there you have it. Relatively boring. We got the people in the comments, you know, the bots with the fake names saying, oh, it was such a good interview. Oh, my God, he did so good. Wow, this is so great. When in reality, you know, they didn't really say anything that wasn't ex expected for him to say. I mean, I didn't get any new information that I didn't already have from the FOMC meeting and the press conference they had. And, you know, I leave here with just having my time wasted for the most part. You know, we got some laughs there, so I guess that was worth it. <laughs> but, uh... That's all I got for you today. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to like and subscribe, and I'll see you soon.